Hi, everyone, and welcome to Fox 9 Sports Now. Jim Rich along with the superstar Mike Morris, and we are joined tonight by Vikings tight end Kyle Rudolph. First off, congratulations for making it through cuts. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Just made it. Yeah. Such a good day. It's a great day, right? When you make the last always cut. Good, always yep. good. Yep. <laughs> yep. I was always ready with my socks washed and everything folded in my duffel bag so when they gave me the word, I could just run and not have to see all, all the guys. Mr. On the Bubble. You had the yeah. truck yeah. idling. You oh, had yeah. the ball boy bring it around. Oh, yeah. You have it set, oh, ready yeah. to go. Well, I'd, they would have had the ball boy for a really good player. I didn't get a ball boy oh. for that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cab fare they did. Cab fare. Yeah. Uber driver. Greyhound right? ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apple. Map. <laughs> for my next stop. Yeah. All right. Now, obviously, the big news uh, coming out of Winter Park. Kyle, you have a new quarterback now as Rick Spielman pulls the trigger, acquiring Sam Bradford from the Philadelphia Eagles. And for you, this certainly has to be a message that the team is stepping up. As Mike Zimmer said on Tuesday when this happened, that, you know what, this is a team. This isn't all about one guy. And then to go out and get a piece like this to keep pushing forward, it has to really say a lot to you and your teammates. Absolutely. I mean, it speaks directly to us. They want to win now, and they think we have a chance of winning right now. And we feel like we have one of the most talented teams that we've had around here in a long time. So um, when they had the opportunity to go get a guy like Sam Bradford, uh, they jumped at it, and I think if you look at uh, what Rick and Coach Zim have done, uh, you know it speaks in the faith that they have and the talent in that locker room because they think with willing to give up a first-round pick that we have a chance to win the Super Bowl right now. What does he bring to the table? I know you've had a very limited time. You're just from practice, so you got to catch some passes from him today, but what did you see? What, what do you know so far? Uh, and he's extremely successful quarterback. You know, you look at his days at Oklahoma and uh, winning the Heisman Trophy and uh, all the success that he had there and then being the number one overall pick. And, you know, as most of us have gone through in our careers, you hit a little bit of adversity with injuries. Uh, when healthy, uh, he's been an outstanding quarterback. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting him here and we have all the confidence in him and Sean Hill as well. All right, now, you can plug your ears. Superstar. <laughs> thinks maybe the price may have been a bit high. So you know, I, I, I don't even want you to nod your head in agreement or disagreement because Rick Spielman's your boss. But, Mike, do you think this may have been a little high for the Vikings to put that I, much I, on the table? I, I, kinda, I thought initially when I heard this uh, that it seemed like a, a bit of a stretch uh, to give, give the number one up. But when you look at how this team is structured and the way it's built, and, the, and they're built for making it into the playoffs right now and advancing through the playoffs, meaning that that first-round draft choice would be 27, 28, 29. And you and I talked about it before the show, but that makes sense for him then to think, I've still got my two and two number threes. Uh, and I never really looked at it that way. I, th I thought it was a bit of a stretch, but looking at it that way, he could still trade up and get him number one and, and still be uh, on track. But initially it hit me as, wow, at number one. And the li <laughs> just the liability, too, with, with uh, Sam Bradford being somewhat injury you know, prone. I, I don't like to use that word, but I just did. But it, it seems like he's had his share of, and the ACLs, two of them, uh, since he was drafted out of Oklahoma. But uh, he is, there's no question the talent and the value for, for a guy like that is, it's clearly what they're paying him and what he deserves. But uh, if he can stay on the field, I, I think that he is worth uh, every bit of that. I think that he was the best option out there. Yeah, no doubt about it. But with Teddy gone for you, Kyle, all the work you guys <clears throat> put in together that goes on hold now for at least this season and for those fans that don't understand the work that you guys put in not only here at winter park but you guys even met together on your own in the off season to get mm -hmm. together what chemistry are you trying to build by doing those workouts oh not only i wouldn't say that you know all that work is put on hold um yeah all that work between teddy and i uh, may not come to fruition this season but uh, all that work with Teddy made me a much better tight end, uh, made me a much better route runner. So, uh, you know, in working with Teddy and putting in the time that we put in, he made me a much better player than I was, say, this time last season. So, you know, I don't think it's fair to say that that work goes on hold. Um, I definitely think uh, that's made me a much better player, and I think Teddy feels the same way. And, you know, for us about making up that ground now with two quarterbacks that we really haven't had a whole lot of work with, um, it's just about doing some extra. Um, sticking around after practice, you know, working during special teams, uh, getting every rep, every opportunity that we have possible to 
try to make up some of that ground that we may have lost all spring and during training camp. How, how do you feel the team is now that the injury is behind you now for a few days? Uh, what is the what is the the karma? What is the aura uh, left mm -hmm. behind in the locker? Because you know, it's funny because last week, you know, Tuesday when when Teddy gets hurt, uh, initially everyone just devastated. Yeah. You know, devastated for Teddy. Um, you know, we realize that we still have a super talented team, and if there is any ultimate team sport, it is football. So we <laughs> knew we still had a chance, but the devastation for a guy who had such an incredible off season, um, you know, his best preseason to date culminating in that Charger game where he was on fire, uh, just played so well. So you're devastated for him, but we knew no one was going to feel sorry for us, so we had to get up and get going. And then uh, earlier this week when we found out we traded for Sam, uh, it felt like, you know, Rick and Coach Zim, you know, as I mentioned earlier on the show, they are showing to us that, look, we think we can win right now, and we're going to win at all costs. We're going to do whatever possible. And I think that kind of breathed some life back into our locker room. And, uh, you know, going out there today on the practice field for the first time since that last preseason game was really good for us. All right. So you talk about improving your game. I mean, you've already had a pretty good career. You've already got a Pro Bowl behind you. What kind of things are you trying to achieve? What, what can we see on Sundays? Or is it something that we as fans don't even detect? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, you know, for me, you know, playing the tight end position, there's so many things that you can help your team win. And, you know, one game it can be catching 10 balls and a touchdown, and the next week it can be uh, helping in protection. And, you know, we run the ball 35 times, and it's one of those games. So, you know, it's hard to put a, put a statistic out there. You know, I want to catch 80 balls this year. That's right. my goal. Um, so I've never really had a statistic goal going into a season. But for me, it's about... Um, making impact plays. You know what we need to do as an offense is take advantage of eight-man fronts. Um, we're going to see even more now uh, than maybe if Teddy was healthy. Um, stuff that we have to do in the passing game on first and second down. All things that I can bring to this offense and things that I can do to help this offense be better. And if I can do that, I can help this offense take the next step uh, in getting us a little bit more balanced. Then I think that will be a successful year for me. What would the learning curve be for Sam Bradford coming in with this much time before the first game against the Titans? It's How much steep. of your playbook can be accessible? <laughs> I know, steep. I know. It's I, especially steep. Norm Turner, uh, I, yeah. I, I get it. But what is, what is your thought? How much can be expected of, of him? And uh, where do you, you kind of go from day one with him now in practice? Well, I think, you know, starting off with the learning curve, like I mentioned before, it's steep. It's, <laughs> if any playbook is tough to learn, it's, it's Norv's. But... Uh, if anyone can do that, you know, just from being Sam, being around Sam for a little while and talking to Pat, who had him in Philly, uh, there's not a brighter guy out there. And, you know, he's a guy that's going to put in the time, put in the work uh, to get the X's and O's down and then let him go out there and just play. All right. Now, both of you guys have been great at giving back. And on Friday night, here in the midst of all that's going on, you take the time to crash yeah. a draft party. Uh, explain how this happens. You had to even carry in the pizzas, for goodness sakes. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, you know, I thank Devonnie's for giving me the opportunity to go over there uh, to the Devonnie's in Eden Prairie and <laughs> stop in on a little local fantasy football party. So uh, I was a little so I walked in about halfway through, and I had not been taken yet. So. <laughs> Uh, we, I, I think I went off the board shortly after when I delivered the pizza. <laughs> I'm sure. I think so. I think that would be a brownie brownie points. Yeah, yeah, exactly. win points. Yeah, let's draft him now. Hey, he's yeah. here. He's here. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Then maybe he'll sit at my table the rest of the time. How many different things are you involved with like this, where they have you either out doing this kind of thing for just the fun of it, or or your charities? You have several that I mm -hmm. know of. And uh, how yeah, many of those my, are, are my going wife and time? I close, work closely with the University of Minnesota mm -hmm. Masonic Children's Hospital, and we have our end zone project there that. Uh, we kind of started last spring with the draft party and, um, you know, behind our donation and raising funds through the community, um, we're looking forward to getting that launched here this fall. We don't have our own personal uh, family foundation or, you know, a Kyle Rudolph foundation, so uh, if we have the opportunity to help any foundation from the Vikings Children's Fund to Chad to the hospital to Starkey, uh, we like to try to do that. All right.